you know, to some this may sound a little goofy, but I actually get excited, you know, when I get ready to record the devotional for the day or pick up a new one because I record various devotionals all through the day and uh, I don't read ahead of time and I don't get some script together and practice my worship time or practice my devotional time or practice anything. If anything, God is practicing on me <laughs> to coordinate in my life His Spirit so that together, you and I, we might see what is the height and the depth, the breadth and the majesty and the wonder of who, who God is, how He speaks, what He does, and how He relates to you maybe differently than he does me. But Tozer that we're looking at now, you know, I don't look at or pick up these books and go, oh, well, you know, Tozer, I know what to expect. I pick up the book and I go, Lord, what are you going to tell me? <laughs> what's what's going to happen? And you know, my wife laughs at me because I've done that before where I kind of I'll take a sneak peek at tomorrow's devotional or something and go, uh-oh, going to be a bad day. Uh-oh, going to be a good day. And it's never a bad day, but it just prepares you for the day that perhaps God may use it in that way that if it's warning you of patience, you know what happens when you pray for patience. So I'm always excited in opening the book when we share it whatever devotional it may be, because all of them speak to me each and every day. These are the ones that I've always read, and I enjoy them. Maybe not always read, a couple more new, but I've always read various devotionals, because they seem to speak to a different part of me, and, and I'm always touched by them. So, as such, because I've always heard God speak, or seen God speak through these words, I've heard God speak audibly too, but seen God speak through these words that I prayed and asked God, Lord, you know, people keep bugging me about, you know, how do you hear God speak? You know, where do you start? How do you, you know, get a person to begin to move into the place where they can hear you or understand you? I mean, boy, Lord, I, I tell people that I can't get God to shut up, you know. And so God said, do this. And we did. So we are. But in so doing, we trust in the Lord to lead us and to direct us. And the way we do that is through devotionals that are in the Bible, you know, our Bible study and our reading, but also evotionals that are in maybe listening. And you don't have to do much, but participate in what God may be saying to you today. <laughs> or as I would say, what God is saying to you, as they used to say in the scriptures, if you have ears to hear. I got ears. I'm not so good at hearing, but I listen. The wickedness of unbelief, making God a liar. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. 1 John 5.10 True faith must always rest upon what God is. So it is of utmost importance that, to the limit of our comprehension, we know what he is. The psalmist said, They that know thy name will put their trust in thee. The name of God being the verbal expression of his character and confidence always rises or falls with known character. What the psalmist said was simply that they who know God to be the kind of God he is will put their confidence in him. This is not a special virtue, but the normal direction of any mind that takes when confronted with the facts. We are so made that we trust good character and distrust its opposite. And that is why unbelief is so intensely wicked. The character of God, then, is the Christian's final ground of assurance, and the solution of many, if not most, of all his practical religious problems. Though God dwells in the center of eternal mystery, there needs to be no uncertainty about how he will act in any situation covered by his promises. 
These promises are infallible predictions. God will always do what he has promised to do when his conditions are met. And he has promised to do, and his warnings are no less predictive. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Psalm 1 5. We cultivate our knowledge of God and at the same time cultivate our faith. Yet while so doing, we look not at our faith, but at Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. You know, it is so true that your vision of God determines your relationship with God. Your perspective on who He is determines the distance or the intimacy of what kind of relationship you have with God. And the more you know who God is and His character and the personality that He is and what He has said about Himself and revealed about Himself, the less likely you are to fear Him in the sense of being distant from Him, but you may have awe of Him and be in wonder, which is what fear of the Lord is partially. And most of the time, like Tozer said, when a person is far from God or rejects the Lord or Jesus or has a problem or some issue with whatever they may have, a death of a loved one or some crazy thing that isn't that big a deal if they really knew who God is and what God does and how God operates, that most of the problems boil down to just a improper knowledge of God. That's all. Once they realize who God is, what He does, and how He operates from love, always, then it's a question not of the problem of God Himself, but the problem of our understanding of what's going on with this situation we have that we don't quite grasp all the ramifications of why or how or what is being applied here. Sometimes it's for learning, sometimes it's for judgment, sometimes it's a consequence of our own actions. I mean, there's a thousand things that people will not take the time to just make a list of what it could be and see if it applies to you because it's easier to blame the God that they don't know than to know the God that loves them and then to not be able to blame God when something isn't going the way you want it to. I think when we discover who God is and the fact that He always gives us ample protection, more than enough wisdom, instruction so we wouldn't stumble and fall, that all we need to do is seek Him and we wouldn't fall down as often as we do or bruise our noses or whine or complain about our religious life, our faith in walking with Him as we do. It's easy to go and make God only a God of worship and good feelings. Well, my God is only real, or I should say more real, in the times when I'm hurting and sad, the times when I cry, the times when I'm all alone. Never, ever are you alone, because if you could open your eyes and see, your God is there.